Are we rolling? We're rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep the cameras going. Raw hide. Kah! I don't know. That's going to peak on the audio. Yeah! <laughs> Headphone, just... Warning headphones users. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm I, I'm tired, but I don't know why. Yeah. What are we I talking plenty about? plenty of sleep. Well, we have a lot of things we could talk about. Can we do the fun one first? I don't think I have time to film two anyway. So oh, we'll just do the. You said two. You said nah, film two. We're not doing two today. There's no way. I got to be somewhere at 11:45. So we should start over and not have that be the intro. Mm, it's a pretty boring intro. We could just keep it, and people would realize how uh, unplanned we are sometimes. Let's, but let's save it for the end as a blooper. Deal. All right. Morning, Madison. Good morning. It's morning when we're filming this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just was telling you. I'm tired, but I don't know why. I got plenty of sleep last night. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it means I'm like really unhealthy with a medical condition or... I don't know. I don't know. Do you think I should go to the doctor? <laughs> everything. Like I think you you diagnose everything as a medical medical condition. <laughs> but I never actually go to the doctor and see. I think You're I, like, think I've I been haven't. laughing more often. And do you think it's a medical condition? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. You might you just be know. joyful. Yeah. I might just be old. I think that's... Yeah. That's probably what it is. I think I'm just getting is. old yeah. and not used to what the feeling of old is. Old is being tired all the time. There you go. I have a hat. Congratulations. So I'm part of the hat brigade now. Yep. The this hat, hat's cool. I like The this hat, hat community welcomes you. Thank you. On I've noticed of hat guys. <laughs> I've noticed hats more now. I know. It's like now that you I talk have about, hats, you've I talked see about hats it more. constantly for the past two weeks. It's not been constant. It's been I think every time I've seen you consistent. I would say every time I've seen you for the past two weeks, you've had a discussion about hats. Definitely. Well, now I'm gonna do some soul searching and pray about that. So <laughs> That's one of the beauties of our relationship is it's a, uh, is you It's both... not a medical condition. I'm just, <laughs> just don't worry. Are hats a medical condition? Right. We're not talking about hats. No. That would be a silly topic. I think um, we're talking about homosexuality. Which is a less silly topic. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Although we could have a, a conversation later on about the whole, can you wear a hat in church and what does this bring up? Because we did have some interesting- uh, That should just be a good pod. That should be the podcast. This one? I think so. All right, let's go back and do it. No, we'll, no, no. We'll, I think just now you know, in a future episode, we will talk about homosexuality. We'll address it. But we're going to talk about hats. All right. We're go, We're pulling a... I think, yeah. I think this is where we go. All right. Improvisational curveball hats. Okay. So, uh, theologically, is it okay to wear hats to church? Maybe. All right. No, why I, do you say why? <laughs> no, it is. So, okay. Let's 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 pull the backdrop. So, this there's like this inside joke going on right now. And I... Uh, I on on stage what inside are, joke. <laughs> what do you what do you mean? You on stage talked about it. It's not. It's like the no, opposite hands, of it is his hands. Joke. It's okay. a big inside joke. So okay. I mean, within the his hands community, sure. Um, like Fred on Sunday spoke, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on my behalf, and uh, on my behalf that sounded weird. I think he spoke instead I, of instead you. of me. <laughs> I asked Fred to speak. What in the world? Uh, I. <laughs> all right, now I got to rein it in. I asked Fred to talk. Yep. Instead of me. And he came out on stage with a hat on. Nice. And everyone laughed because if they were there the previous Sunday, they, mm-hmm. they knew. And then he took his hat and said, I just have to cover up all this hair. Yeah. And I was like, ah. <laughs> So the, the thing I talked about on stage a few weeks ago, because I'm a little bit of an open book sometimes to a, uh, a negative degree. But I just talked about the fact that I've been really wrestling with, like, I'm losing my hair. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's going bit by bit, but consistently. Sure. You know, constantly. My like, condolences. Hey, it's all good. And the funny thing is, a buddy of mine met with me like six, seven months ago. And it's someone we both know, mm-hmm. but I won't tell who it is because, you know, privacy. And they were like, hey, I'm I'm losing my hair. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of thrown me off. And I told this guy like, that's not a big deal. Like, mm-hmm. come on, man. Just wear, wear a hat. Is Don't that what even you said? wear a hat. Like, <laughs> lots of guys lose their hair. It's yeah. actually really normal. Um, mm-hmm. Even if you look at famous actors, if you look at their hairline, right, and most of them, their hairline is not what it was when they were in their twenties. But you don't even notice that mm-hmm. because you don't care. Yeah, and that's they also have like them. millions of dollars to make their hair beautiful. Matthew McConaughey mm-hmm. does have a different hairline. He's got more hair than he used to. That definitely that, that happens. But yeah, you can spend enough money, you can make it. But point is, guys' hairline recedes. It goes. Mm-hmm. And I told this guy, it's not a big deal, man. You're mm-hmm. you're good. <laughs> and then literally a few weeks later, I got my hair cut, and the hair person at Supercuts or wherever I, I was, I was like, oh, starting to thin out back here. <laughs> and it like created a legitimate emergency in my brain. I just got done telling this guy, like, it's not a big deal. Right. Come on, man, you're, you're good. And I was like, oh no. Um, and so, you know, I've just sort of been like you've wrestling been, with you've that. You've been playing with the idea of wearing a hat. Well, I've been, no, I haven't, that, that's a newer development. <laughs> okay. But 
basically what happened was over the course of six months, we'll get to the, the topic at hand because this isn't really about hats. It's about legalism. It's about uh, what is church okay. dress code. Church dress probably code. Be a... And even just like, what is this stuff? What matters in our faith? Yeah. Like what matters in our, in our life expression of God kind of thing. And so anyway, the, over the course of six months, I just sort of, I grew my hair longer and sort of kind of like, I don't know, holding on to whatever I got left. I don't know what the thing was. I guess I was having a midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And then I went swimming and Liam laughed at me, my yeah. oldest son. I got out of the pool and he's like, oh, look at Teenagers. That. <laughs> They're good at exposing yeah. any insecurities you have. And uh, he just was like, oh man, it's getting pretty thin up there, dad. And so I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna be a hat guy. So I bought seven hats. Mm -hmm. Six of the seven have arrived at my house. I got one that's still on the way. Do you were they different styles or were they all the same style? Slightly they different just like style. look they like no, different no, colors. A couple of them are flat brim. Yeah. Like I already had a hat that I had bought for my son at a Hawks game mm -hmm. that he never wears. And so I went ahead and put it on and it's a flat brim. And it looked mm -hmm. it looks, yeah. was like, no, it looks good on you. Um so I bought a couple of those and then a couple like like this that are yeah. what would you call this? I would call that a trucker hat. A trucker hat. Okay. Yeah. So it's not flat brim. It's like would you call that a trucker hat? I mean is this a trucker hat? I don't know. Okay, yeah. trigger. So I just bought a couple, and it's fine. Um, and I think seven's my. Seven's and then someone <laughs> brought me like four and put them on my desk. Yeah. And so I actually have eleven hats now. Nice. I had none. I had one, the the hawk's hat that I had mm -hmm. never wore. So anyway, so the, but this led into all this stuff, and and here's where it got to an interesting point, is I, I almost called Alex, who's right there. What up, Alex? He just went like this. He's got a hat on too. Mm -hmm. In fact, Zach's the only one that doesn't have a hat on. <laughs> we call him we call him hatless, hatless Zach. Zach. What a <laughs> what a dork. Um, so I almost called Alex and said, "Hey man, can you add some uplighting on stage?" Because right. I was like, "Well, if I wear a hat on stage, it's going to be a big shadow because mm -hmm. the way that our, our lights are." That's yeah, so let's get some uplighting. And then I paused. I went, "Oh man, I, I've clearly mentally gone down that I'm. What, what, is this even okay? Whatever. And so I looked up online because I go down these rabbit holes and I looked up online like pastors wearing hats because there is this sort of category of hip pastors mm -hmm. where they dress super cool. Right. And there's a whole like, it's hats, it's thick frame glasses, it's cool jeans, it's is really it expensive thick frame glasses sneakers. Or I don't know. Like the big goggle Maybe that's what it glasses. Is. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not a fashion guy. Yeah. I never have been. I've gone through phases where different seasons of life I care about it more than other yeah. times. But like... No, you're, you're a preacher with sneakers, we know. Well, I, I'm a basketball fan. Yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of basketball shoes, but mm -hmm. usually the preacher with sneakers thing, you're talking no, like rare Jordans yeah, that are, yeah, yeah. you know. No, I, I have a lot of basketball shoes because the thing I love, like if you're making a list of things I love, it's mm -hmm. like Jesus, mm -hmm. family, church, all that stuff. Ba basketball's pretty high up there. Mm -hmm. So that's different. And I play basketball. Does bas basketball exceed the love of any of your children individually? Depends on the week. Right. Uh, <laughs> it can like float above them. Yeah, no. Um, but point is, yeah. So, but I'm not the sneaker guy that's got like. I know, I know. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm messing with you. I'm but sorry. That, I know, and I think that's probably where <laughs> this comes in. I don't want to be one of those guys. I know. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't mess with you as much as I do No, about you do. This. It's fine. It's fine. But I don't want to be one of those guys because I don't, you know, our, our culture at his hands, it's not about who's on stage. But I think this is like the first time. It was the first time I'd ever even thought about, oh, I'm making a. I'm making a decision about like wearing a certain thing and should I have like a hundreds of dollars decision for lighting based on what you wear. Kind of, it, but like then even implications. But even Alex has said in the past, at least once before, it wouldn't be a bad idea if we had up lighting because right. it looks better on camera. And so I was like, well, that's something we've talked about anyway. And back yeah. then I was like, ah, who cares? Right. You know? <laughs> but now, so, ah, but this led to a deeper thing. So let me explain. I know this is a really long winded I guess this is my midlife crisis on film. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to process this. And that, it's like a counseling <laughs> session. Thank you. Um, no, so what happened was all of a sudden I started looking up some stuff because I don't want to be one of those guys who's like, hey, mm -hmm. what's up? I'm cool pastor so-and-so. I'm not that. That's not my personality. That's not who I am. Um, B, I stumbled on all these conversations about like first Corinthians where it talks about how it is shameful for a man to have his head covered mm -hmm. and it's shameful for a woman to have, to not have her head covered. And that was the Corinthian church. And like, I found a video of this one pastor and I'm sure he's a great guy. I how don't many know views him. did this video have? Uh, quite a few, but not like an insane amount, right. but it's this guy and he, he, uh, I don't know, man, it just has a certain vibe. <laughs> he's in this like 
arm leather armchair in this office. He's that's, smoking a cigar. It kind of looks yeah. like it could be a cigar. He's not, but it has this very like heavy wood. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can almost smell the, the way the room smells. It smells of leather bound books. You know, it's like <laughs> anchor man joke. But uh, had a very serious vibe, and he was like, "If if a pastor wears a hat, he has this very tone. He's in sin." <laughs> He's in sin. Obviously in sin. He's in sin. And uh, I was like, well, I don't want to be in sin. As a, I, I, All these things came to my mind. And so then the next Sunday, I start looking around. I'm like, there's a lot of hats in this room. <laughs> like I'm at the sound booth and I'm looking around. I'm like, that guy's wearing, he's wearing, there's hundreds of hats. Mm -hmm. And I've never even noticed these before. I don't care. Right. And then I'm like, wait, Matt, our worship pastor, wears a beanie. That's right. actually like a thing. Yeah. And we even ordered worship uh, beanies right. when our worship album came out with our little worship logo on it and like mm -hmm. it made sense with Matt. And Herb, who's one of our mainstays on the worship team, everybody loves Herb. He's like the most joyful, mm -hmm. passionate worshiper of God I think I may have ever known. I don't think I've, I've seen Herb without a hat on twice in his life. And it was like, Herb, put a hat on. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I've never seen you without one. Herb wears a hat on Sunday. Every time Every he's time on. he worships. Yeah. No one's ever said a thing. Right. And yet I was wrestling deeply with this mm -hmm. hat issue. Um, so I kind of brought it up on stage as a joke. And I'm like, aha, you know, Matt wears one, Herb wears one, and no one and everyone kind of cheered. And I realized in that moment, maybe I'm a maybe we're a hat church. <laughs> maybe I could do this. Um, I think what you were recognizing is as a leader, you do signal to people to some degree, like what's okay. Like yeah. someone who's on the stage and is taking the the platform or whatever you want to call it seriously. You're saying there's a responsibility there and I want to just at least consider you're making a change and you're aware of the change yeah, and you so, want to consider yes. like, is it a, is it a thing that's appropriate? And am I signaling to some, to everybody, something that's not okay is okay. I right. think that's worth is, wrestling. Is through. an insecurity in me. Right. R has it risen to the level that I'm willing to just cover that insecurity and like I'm saying hats are okay because I'm insecure <laughs> right. isn't a, isn't right. a good filter to have. So, yeah, yeah. So then I had, but it, it's such a silly thing because it's dumb. Who cares? Mm -hmm. There are people who care. Uh, that guy, the guy is one <laughs> in the hundreds of years. We haven't encountered him. And many people here no. that, that have that like strong conviction, I guess. No, but, it, but so it hit me because I was like, wait a minute. And this leads to a deeper conversation about how we even interpret scripture. Mm -hmm. It hit me like, well, if I'm uncomfortable wearing a hat on stage, should I tell Matt to not wear one anymore? Should I tell Herb not to wear one anymore? And I was like, well, no, I don't. It's right. never even crossed my mind to tell Herb or, or Matt, hey, guys, mm -hmm. take it off. It's never crossed my mind. And then on the flip side, if it's okay for those guys to wear a hat on stage, why would it be wrong for the pastor to wear a hat on mm -hmm. stage? That doesn't track, right? It's either... It's either wrong or it's not. Now, you could make the argument, like you said, well, yeah, but it's a different level of leadership, so there's a different responsibility level yeah, and, sure. and whatnot. Okay, fine. But I think that goes for the people on I that are leading on the stage, I think stage you, once too. you're leading worship, yeah. you've already crossed into that. And then you were like, oh, I, I teach wearing a hat all the time. <laughs> and then I think I asked, would you do it on stage on a Sunday morning? And I said, no. Right. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I was like, well, what, what in the world? Well, I also kind of like, if I'm, you know... I'm the young guy. I'm preaching yeah. on Sunday. It's there's a little bit of a presentation thing there. Like I wear a button up shirt if I'm teaching on Sunday. But I'm, I don't wear I'm, button up shirts. No, I used I to. Right, but I'm I haven't worn like, one in a long time because right. I'm being given because you're the young an, guy. You're an opportunity of the platform. I want to at least communicate by what I'm wearing that I'm taking. Okay, it let me ask you a question. You know? Do you like? So it's funny the button down shirt thing. Mm -hmm. I used to wear button down shirts a lot, mm -hmm. and then I I've been more in the sweatshirt right. like rolled up sleeves category. That's what I wear all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'll just get nicer ones of these and wear them on stage. And Dick Sporting Goods, I guess I'm revealing something here. Dick Sporting Goods actually had a sale on these sweatshirts that I really like. Mm -hmm. They were like 11 bucks a shirt and they came in like 13 colors. You just got all 13. I got all 13. And nice. if you look at our messages over the last three months, it's just me in the same sweatshirt, but a different color. <laughs> nice. Every week. Cool. So there's that. Um, but anyway, all that to say, like when Steve was the pastor, I used to sort of dress more like he dressed when I would speak sure. because it was kind of like, okay, I'm stepping into, right. I'll kind of step into that culture a little bit. And I dressed more casually mm -hmm. when I taught the students than I dressed on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I, oh, I dress really cool when I teach the students. They think I'm really cool. 
you seem there's a sarcasm no, in your yeah, voice. No, no, yeah. no. And I mean, I, I put on dress shoes to teach on Sundays. That's if the point. I'm in the big, you in might the big be, room, but oh, I don't might dress a little think different. That's like a conviction. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's if, just like uh, if you had pushed me on it and been like, "Hey, man, you don't need to wear dress shoes," I'd probably be like, "Yeah, that's fine, okay." And sometimes I would, and sometimes right, I would. You said no to wearing a hat. I know. Yeah. You're like, I don't know. So all this brought okay, silly topic. And if there's someone still listening to this, wow, wow, <laughs> congratulations. What is the deeper point? I think to rewind, you mentioned First Corinthians. Yes. What is your takeaway interpretation there? Like, right. you seem to have come to a conclusion about the head coverings in right. that context of that that letter. Yeah, because basically, I got to this point from a theological stance. Well, then, either a, it's okay for me to wear a hat mm-hmm. on stage when I teach, in case Alex get a little light that you know fixes the shadow. Um, or B, just like one light, one light, like a flashlight. <laughs> I just put my holds. I just put my phone's flashlight on and put it on the ground and like stand above <laughs> on the on a, <laughs> like, uh, music stand. That's exactly. What I mean. Yeah, it's super simple. Um, or B, I need to tell. So either A, it's okay for me to do right. it, or B, I need to tell Matt and Herb take the hat off. Yeah. you know. Well, I think actually there's a there's a C option. What's the C option? The C option I think comes from uh, like sins of conscience. So yeah, yeah, there, there is a, res- a personal accountability between you and the Lord that is right. a- if, if as you're seeking the Lord, you recognize this is either masking my insecurity or feeding my insecurity or vice versa. And the Lord says, no, right. Of you course. can, you can, as a personal conviction go, I'm never going to wear a hat on stage. That comes from the Lord when I don't have to communicate that to, to Matt or 100%. Herb. So that's like yeah, the so C there, option. C is the personal conviction. And I don't have a personal conviction about it. Right. Like I truly don't. In fact, it's funny. Um, I ordered these hats and I like, <laughs> I like wearing hats. Yeah. <laughs> this morning I woke up kind of late. Yeah. And like, I, I just, don't have to do my hair. I did. No, I'm serious. <laughs> like, oh, so I just put a hat on. Yep. It was great. It was a suit. And actually in college, I wore a beanie all the time. And that's mm-hmm. part of how I got to class on time in college was just throw it on and go to class. So I like that. And truthfully on the, it's funny on the conviction side, this is what's interesting. I think it's like, I don't ever want to be someone who being on stage should not be something that plays into the security and security thing at all. You know, so it's funny. I was in the best shape of my life before COVID hit Mm. and we never had cameras. Of your life? Oh yeah. Like I was- better than high school when you're just like naturally like- Yeah, I was probably in better- I may have not been the thinnest I'd ever been, sure. but in terms of a uh, combination of like like muscle, mm-hmm. muscle mass. And before COVID, I'd hired a personal trainer. Nice. I was working out. I was lifting more than I ever lifted. And I I was the most fit. Mm-hmm. I, like if, and we never had cameras. There's no visual mm-hmm. evidence of that whatsoever. <laughs> COVID hits. I put on a bunch of weight during COVID. We get cameras. First time there's ever been cameras. It's like... Yep. You know what I mean? And I'm fine with it. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not someone who I don't. That's why I just bought 13 shirts of the same color because I don't care. It's just like, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to look like a slob on stage, but I don't want to spend, I don't want to spend time going, what should I wear? And so it's like, oh, just wear the blue one. I wore the mm-hmm. green one last week, wear the blue one this week. Mm-hmm. I love that. And the same is true with the hat. I don't want to sit there on Sunday morning and like spend 10 minutes doing my hair being like, oh, it doesn't look right because I I just put a hat on. Mm-hmm. So I, I like that aspect of just who cares? Just mm-hmm. black hat, blue hat. I don't care. Um, that to me was in a weird way. That's more like how I live my life. I don't worry about it. Just right. get up and go. And that fits very well there. I don't have so a you're personal conviction. That fixing your hair wasn't necessarily, well, it is because you're bummed about it, but it also isn't. I'm not that isn't, bummed about it because I got hats. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be bummed about it. But it's also the like... <laughs> Like you're trying to please a certain expectation of yeah. the, the cameras are on you and Correct. blah, blah, blah. Say, yeah. I don't care about that. Like I'm going to yeah. get older and there'll be a visual, you know, here's the decline of uh, well, Justin got older. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. I don't care. Um, but I don't want to, st- I don't want to do the wrong thing. It's just that simple. I care mm-hmm. deeply about God and something as silly as a hat shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. But it did bring up this interesting thing. Like I mm-hmm. said, category C, you mentioned good personal conviction, we're told in scripture that we should live by our personal convictions and to betray a conviction. If it's, if you think you're sinning, it's a sin. It's a sin. Yeah. I don't think it's a sin to wear a hat. And I got to this point where I said, either it's okay for me to do it or it's not okay for right. those guys to do it. And so this brings us back to that passage in first Corinthians, which we have just gone to. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's how conversations work. Um, what's your take on that scripture? Because it says in First Corinthians, Paul's addressing the church, and yes. he's ba- Corinthians is the church where Paul's always like, "What are you guys doing? 
Like he actually, we, we know there are letters that Paul wrote to Corinth that we don't have because he references mm. other letters. Like there's at least two, there's at least three or four right. letters. We only have two. And some people actually think that we actually have a combination of different letters that is like it Second Corinthians, a, com a compilation. A compilation. Yeah. Because he references the last time I wrote to you. Right. I believe in First Corinthians. Hmm. So we have, I don't know. Um, but they're the church that Paul's almost always going like, guys, like, yeah, what I, are you doing? Corinth was a very wild place. Right. It would be like a starting a church in, I don't know. Vegas. Vegas and right there on the strip in Vegas mm -hmm. and dealing with, okay, hey guys, we got to. There'd be dress code issues there. There might be. Yeah. And there'd be. And so Paul was very much defined as not being legalistic. His writings to the church and in, in, uh, to the Galatians, they were becoming very legalistic, religious. And he's like, what are you guys doing? You've, mm -hmm. You have grace. Why would you go back to mm -hmm. legalism? You know, he doesn't use that exact word, but I mean, he's, he's strong language mm -hmm. to the Galatians about don't go backwards. Yeah. And then he's reigning the Corinthians in. And then he's in. reigning the Corinthians yeah. in. And it shows you how, what Paul, Paul had a really hard job in the early church. Part of his role was to be the guy who figured out how to make this actually work. Yeah. And for some people that was like, guys, let loose, live, put a hat on. <laughs> for, yeah. for others, it was like, what are you guys doing? Take, Take the hat, hat off. off. Yeah. And it creates an interesting, if you only read Paul's writings through the lens of what are the rules, right? you'll get really confused really fast because it seems to sort of... Yeah, and that's where, for me, my take on what he's addressing is a generalized, it's it's a cultural issue and it's a cultural respect issue. So it's a distraction in mm -hmm. this culture for you not to cover your head and you to cover your head. Culturally, for me, I don't feel like at his hands specifically, it's a distraction for you to to wear a hat. Well, I'm not thing, the judge of that. You know, right, like correct. some people might be distracted. Correct, yeah. Um, but to me, it's like, and I didn't wear a hat on Sunday. Right. Right. I, I, honestly, I was like, well, and I'm not I think quite there yet. I think enough people. Um, I think this would go into like what is appropriate to wear at church on Sunday in general, like right. especially on stage, like. Uh, certain band t-shirts, like I wouldn't wear a certain band t-shirt because I don't want people either thinking that I'm like endorsing every song that the Beatles ever wrote right, or, right. you know, which there's songs from the Beatles that I super don't agree with the, the theology of the yeah, I mean, song. The, or There's songs <laughs> that have Hindu chants. Yes, right. In the And so the song. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily believe that that's what a shirt is doing, but I, I can understand that it would be a distraction to some people. Correct. So I would forego my freedom yes. to wear the shirt that I want to wear for the sake of the service and the sake right. of, for the sake of the Lord. So there are some things that are like that. That's where I would probably land with that first Corinthians passage. That's mm -hmm. like, this is for some reason, maybe that I don't understand. It was considered shameful to go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that applies to modern baseball caps. Like, I don't think that that, that carries right. over into our honor shame culture and what the role of our heads and head coverings. Yeah. If you went plays. back in time, 50 years, right. In American culture. Okay. It would be pretty Well, weird. men wore hats all the time. <laughs> yeah. Look at, uh, like look at pictures of baseball games from back in the day. And it isn't a bunch of people wearing baseball caps. Right. It's like guys in suits with like suit right. hats. And then, but then if like a lady was in their presence, they would like take the hat off. Yeah, right. If they would ever sit down and it's eat a respectful, and pray. It's a respectful thing. And I just think culturally that that right. uh, respect is probably more communicated by your phone being in your pocket than it is by your hat on your head. You know, Interesting, it's like yeah. I'm communicating that I'm That the rules and culture here. change. Yeah. And so from a theological standpoint where we get to, and this is where interpreting scripture becomes very, very awesome and challenging at the same time. And I say all the time in our newcomer gatherings, that if we interpret scripture responsibly mm -hmm. and apply it lovingly, we're in a good place. Okay? Yeah, because I don't want to dismiss all biblical commands as Correct. cultural context. Oh, that was a cultural thing. <laughs> Correct. And that's where it becomes very easy to sort of pick and choose. So you have to really do right. the due diligence. There's a, a an idea um, that you'll read. The, the idea is, is this descriptive mm -hmm. scripture or prescriptive scripture? So we have a lot of this in the Old Testament, for example. Uh, in the Old Testament, the Jewish people, for they were told not to wear clothing made of two fabrics. Right. So you couldn't wear a cotton polyester blend if you're living by the Jewish mm -hmm. law as given to Moses. And there are still Jewish communities that take that seriously. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. I don't wear a multi-fabric blended. Mm -hmm. they have, they I, know, I know Christians that 
that love Jesus, believe that he did everything that the scriptures say he did that still don't wear multi-blended fabrics right. because they and, see that as a as a command. Right. You have a tattoo on your arm. Mm -hmm. What's the tattoo of, by the way? This is uh, of a sheep getting killed, I guess. <laughs> a sheep with a red X yep. and a little drop of blood. Yep. Can you see it? Okay. There you go. So do you hate sheep? I, yeah, it's no sheep necks is <laughs> no what my tattoo necks. means. What does it mean? No, it's about uh, Jesus' sacrifice. He's the yeah. final sacrificial lamb. And so where our sins needed atoning for kind of on a regular basis. Yeah. This is kind of a reminder for me that Jesus did that for me once and for all. So if I'm beating myself up about the things that I carry too much that right. I've, I've, that's already been dealt with. It's, it's been dealt with. It's done. That's cool. But Leviticus says... Don't mark your bodies yeah. for the dead or uh, cut them for the dead. And right. to me, I land on a, that's a uh, cultural uh, implication uh, saying like, hey, because the Canaanites do this, right? don't be like the Canaanites yeah, so when it's coming from Leviticus a, 18 or whatever it's from. And that gets to another level. So we've got prescriptive, descriptive. Descriptive would mean for all people for all time. Mm -hmm. uh, don't commit sexual adultery like don't right. commit uh, don't commit acts of sexual morality mm -hmm. well that was just for that group of people for that time right <laughs> right well we kind of always know no that's that's a yeah, don't murder yeah and we see that by the way as threads that go all throughout the mm -hmm. scriptures where these things don't change um and it's funny you mentioned homose we mentioned homosexuality as a topic mm -hmm. we're going to talk about in a future episode um and we're going to talk about it in a really loving way but that would fall into that category of mm -hmm. like well this is Old Testament, New Testament, this is descriptive. Mm -hmm. Prescriptive would mean for a specific group of people for a specific time. Just like I'm giving you this prescription. Is that backwards? No. Because I thought descriptive descriptive is describing what's happening for the specific people. Prescriptive is telling all people for all time. I feel like that's backwards. I don't think it is, but if it is, I can make mistakes and live with it. So uh, <laughs> I thought descriptive is describing what is going on. Like where well, pull up your phone real quick and search a descriptive I, scripture. I can't. You can't? I don't have Google on my phone. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm and gonna look this pause. Up. I'm gonna look this up. Descriptive versus prescriptive. Because prescriptive is like when a biblical command actually still applies to us. Hold on. Hold on. Google can't be wrong. Yeah, don't read the AI okay. answer at the top. <laughs> I, hate that. I hate it too. All right, I'm not doing that. Um, uh, the difference is this. A passage is descriptive if it's simply describing something that happened, while a passage is prescriptive if it is specifically teaching that something should happen. Okay. And oh, this so... Would, this would on. be like going to conquer Canaanites. Let's keep with the Canaanites. Going to conquer the Canaanites versus Christians should conquer the Canaanites. Yeah. Or we should go fight mm. battles. Okay, so in this one, okay, if we take this passage descriptive, and there are many things we learn, okay, if we take it as prescriptive. All right, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. I got it. You're right. All right, so prescriptive would mean we should all do this. Mm -hmm. Descriptive means it's describing something that, yeah, which makes more sense with the words. Yeah, it, well, it's what Listen, you said. Listen, I'm the lead pastor of the church, so. <laughs> I'm not trying to correct you. No, you are. No, I appreciate that, actually, because um, there's so many terms and so many, yeah, like you read so much stuff, sometimes you get it all mixed up. It's all good. So What you've said with scripture doesn't condone everything it records. Correct. We're talking about the difference between commanding and recording. Correct. So prescriptive are commands prescriptive for are commands. Christians. Potentially for all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and good. And then descriptive is describing the thing. This is why, by the way, pause, surround yourself with really great people because it is so easy, uh, especially dealing with like the whole gist of Christian theology <laughs> to just be like, oh yeah, I got those two mixed up in my head. Sure. And then if you don't have people around you to check you on that, <laughs> you can just go way down a certain path and not realize right, right. What, what in the world. Um, so thank you for that, actually. Yeah, so... With this scripture in Corinthians, we have to decide, is it prescriptive? Going back to the the Jewish people with two fabrics, well, is this describing mm -hmm. what they were supposed to do for their world? Mm -hmm. um, tattoos, another example. Mm -hmm. The Canaanites, the the pagan people would mark their bodies, and this had a very significant... Yeah, like, like to honor the dead. And that's where it's like, even just on the tattoo, I would I would give people caution and... You I don't know, have any tattoos. The like pray through it sort mm -hmm. of filter. Because I do think that there is um, a prescriptive command that even still con contained in that, like applies to us. So like, 
I have more of an issue with people. And again, if you have this, there's grace and it's not like a sin. Maybe this is just where I'm processing. Your conviction might be. Yeah. Like if I have like a, my great granddad's name on my arm, that might be a, cl- a little that's bit closer a more, to more like, of a one to one to that. Correct. And it's like, thing. to honor them, that's great. But it's like, if it's a grief thing, like you want to be able to process your grief and move on for it, not always be associated with it. So, so I you would like, tell someone, Hey, think through that process, before, process right. through it before you, but you don't have a, pr- you're fine having a tattoo on your body. You yeah, don't look at right. that and say, this was. This was prescribing all people for all time. Correct. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, man, I'm just thinking through in my head how many times have I gotten the descriptive versus prescriptive thing wrong? And probably a few. I so think apologies you're fine. to anyone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't care that much. But first Corinthians. Yep. Hats. Yep. So we have to decide is Paul saying for all time, all followers of Jesus, men don't cover your heads, women cover your heads. Mm. And that's funny because a lot of the, the churches that might, say, can't have a hat on, like, well, you don't tell the women to cover their heads. Right. Well, I'm, most of them would probably find like, yeah, well, we don't do that part of it. Yeah. Head we covering is oppressive, part. but. Right. But we do have, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, yeah. that is a thing in yeah, other yeah. cultures where women mm-hmm. always have their heads covered. And then there's other people split hairs and say, no, no, it's saying that a woman's hair is her head covering. And it uh-huh. would be shameful if she were to shave her head. Gotcha. And not have. Yeah. There's like a long hair, short hair thing that goes there's on with a whole, this too. There's a whole bunch yeah. of things. And so we have to look at it and go, what, what's the context? It, like we said, is this describing Paul? We get to see this a lot in Paul's writings. Paul, We see how Paul's handling situations that mm-hmm. were very specific to that group of people. Mm-hmm. Going back to the analogy we had 50 years ago, yeah, 50 years ago, the way American culture was, it would have been like a, re- a big deal for a guy to have a hat on. Mm-hmm. Even like if a, a woman walked in the room and you, you kept your hat on, you'd be like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. And you would almost, it would be like, so, okay, Maybe this has changed actually in our culture, but I remember being at a baseball game um, 10, 15 years ago mm-hmm. and the national anthem came on mm-hmm. and this one guy didn't stand mm. in our section. And a guy behind me, like I'm in this row and it was awkward because I think the guy turned around and looked at me and I was like, I didn't say that. <laughs> you know, it was like, I don't want to get involved. In, it wasn't me. But the guy behind me yelled over my shoulder, hey, we stand up for the anthem here, man. And the guy that was sitting down turned around yeah. and I was like, <laughs> you know, um, but that would be something that that's mm-hmm. a cultural thing mm-hmm. that really matters. And so is it just that? And that's where we have to do our best and trust the Holy Spirit to ask ourselves, well, what is it? Is it, yeah, this is describing a cultural issue and Paul's saying, guys, the, you're causing all this commotion and ruckus because you're just ignoring, stop it. Like guys, you know, don't cover your head. Ladies, keep your heads covered. Right. Like, this is, or is it Paul saying this? I'm prescribing for all time. Mm-hmm. And to some degree, we have to use discernment there. Mm-hmm. And we have to ask those questions. Where do you land on that? What, what's your take? Uh, for hat covering specifically? You think it's a cultural thing? Yeah, I, th- I think it's a cultural thing. And like I said, I preach on Sunday mornings with the with my hat on. Mm-hmm. Part of our uniform for the high school so why students then if, is if, a hat. If it was devil's advocate, why is that a cultural thing? But then like we were going to talk about issues of sexuality. Why would homosexuality not just be, well, in their culture... Uh, maybe I don't have a great answer um, other than that as you're interpreting it, you can kind of get to the core of the issue. And I don't feel like right. the core of the issue goes beyond something cultural. So, like, so that's huge. Pursuing like the sexuality and integrity with your body, I think, gets to a core of like made in God's image. It gets to a core of um, God's desire for how uh, our bodies are used. It gets to the core of the Holy Spirit living mm-hmm. within us. There's like more of like a theological core there. When I pro- start to probe the um, the hat issue and the head covering issue, I could probably make some stuff up about like, you know, the, the gray hair is the crown of glory from Proverbs. And there's like some you yeah, know right, theological right. connections maybe, but it's not, um, to me, it doesn't go a lot deeper. What you're describing is the that. difference between a precept and a principle. Mm. So I, I think I'm right on this one. I, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> precepts would be like laws, specific sure. things told. But then behind those is a principle. Right. Peter deals with this when God tells him, you may eat freely yeah, the, now. The blanket the falls blanket on all The blanket vision and it's right yeah. before the Gentiles become uh, start becoming Christians. And, you know, he's told Peter, God tells Peter, eat that. Mm-hmm. And Peter's like, that's an unclean animal. I've never eaten that before. Right. I, would, I would never do it. Peter tells God, no, a lot, mm-hmm. right? Jesus, no, you can't wash my feet. <laughs> no, I won't eat that. And then God says to Peter, "How? who are you to say something is unclean that I have made clean? Mm-hmm. Like the only reason the Jews weren't allowed to eat that was because God said not to. Right. But if God changes that and says, now you can, 
Yeah. And, well, he, and, he's the one who determines what's unclean and clean and, and what's even right that and not is, right. Like you said, the Gentiles are becoming Christians. It's this bigger, Correct. bigger scope of God's plan saying, hey, this is a representation of, of welcoming the Gentiles into this community. The, the old era of the Jewish people being so set apart mm -hmm. from the rest of the world. That's what God was doing. The reason they dress different, ate right. different all that is because he's like, I need the world to know that you are totally different. Sanctified. Sanctified, set apart. Mm -hmm. But now, even from the original promise of Abraham, it was going to come through the Jewish people, but be for all nations. And right. now all nations are coming. You guys need to let loosen up on... Right. It's not about separating yourselves from everyone. It's actually about this embracing, mm -hmm. okay? There's a principle behind it. Um, we have to decide as, as Jesus followers, well, hey, we have to understand what are the principles at play here. And... When it comes to something like, well, when it comes to something like, uh, for example, the, the hats and the head coverings, there were all kinds of cultural things happening in the early church that don't really apply to our culture today. Mm -hmm. Meat sacrifice to idols would be a good example. Right. We don't really have that. I don't go to Publix and go, ooh, is this chicken yeah. offered to a false god? But it that, represents a principle. It of, represents a principle of worship, of worship, uh, and engaging with a culture that has yes. different values. And that's why I think the head covering for me lands on the principle is of respect. And mm -hmm. so, what communicates respect when you're in the gathered church mm -hmm. service? If your culture kind of has its ground rules of respect, mm -hmm. and you're not going to wear a, a T-shirt that has a cuss word on it, like that's right. like a it communicates respect for what you're doing. Correct. That's why I would wear dress shoes on Sunday morning yeah. in the big room. We're not as Christians, I think maybe this is where it gets to, we're, we're not called to, it's not about self-expression. Mm. Like when I'm on stage or when I'm even living life, my filter is not, I got to be me. Sure. Right. That's not the, the point. Go back to maybe the 1960s for a guy to have really long hair in the 1960s was right. almost a sign of rebellion. Mm -hmm. And it was like mm -hmm. the hippie movement was this, we're rebelling against. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, as a Jesus follower, I am meant to be a rebel in many ways. Mm -hmm. But in other ways, I'm actually meant to like Paul, not be, I'm not meant to cause unnecessary disruptions and division because mm -hmm. I'm just, like if I'm going to be a rebel, it's because I am doing what God has called me to do. And that's sometimes going to create, it's going to, you know, turn some tables over, mm -hmm. but I'm not going, man, how can I rebel against the world? Or and, and you're, with self-expression, I think to some extent is like an elevation of yourself to say like my comfort or my, right. you knowing who I am is the most important. But I, I do think that there's... So in some church, to so go back, in some yeah. church cultures, like his hands... There's hundreds of hats. Matt wears a mm -hmm. hat. Her wears a hat. If I walked on stage wearing a hat, you know, it's not different from, it's not like, whoa. If I went to another church mm -hmm. where that church, this group of people love the Lord, whatever, and they, this church's culture is much more about, or in another nation, maybe would even be a better, yeah, a better right. example. Another nation, like go to Guatemala, go to church in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Like they're dressed crazy casual. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like at the church that we, at least the church we work with in Guatemala, um, it's it's one of those issues. I have a grandfather that was a missionary in Bolivia mm -hmm. and my wife's mother, Spanish was her first language. She grew up in Bolivia. You would never know it looking at her, mm -hmm. um, but she's she's bilingual and Spanish was her first culture, all that kind of stuff, the mm -hmm. you know, South American culture. Totally different in terms of right. what you should wear, not wear. Uh, I know guys who have been missionaries in Africa and ladies will come to church topless because they're breastfeeding. <laughs> right. And that's not a thing. No one's right. like, hey, we live in this very varied world and we do have to use our discernment to go, well, wait, am I, am I just being me, self-expression, and I'm willing to let this cause whatever distractions yeah, because you, I'm using my freedom. Right. Not you spoke to, at a funeral on Friday. Yes. And you used, you didn't take that opportunity to use your freedom in Christ to wear your hoodie and your hat. No, I wore a suit. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I combed my hair Same and with all the that. wedding. Like Same with the, the wedding, same the, with all that, yeah. The timing and place actually has so a bearing on that. All that brings us to this really long rabbit hole of it's about love. Mm. It's about love for one another and a desire for there to be unity. And I wouldn't want to do anything that takes away mm -hmm. from that. My self-expression, my personal feelings of security, insecurity, comfort with myself, whatever, none of that can rise to the level where that's worth creating division in the church. Right. And the the principle I think we see in the Corinthian church is there was all kinds of division happening amongst all kinds of things. And Paul is like, guys, stop it. The, you guys have this, you've got that. Sometimes there were moral issues, but there is a unity in the body that requires us to be willing to submit to, in some ways, 
submit to what is viewed as appropriate. Mm -hmm. So if I, again, if I was going to teach at my, my grandparents' church in rural Missouri, mm -hmm. um, they're all passed away now, but you know, 10, 20 Everyone years ago. In rural, rural Missouri or... Oh, the people... The pe yeah, <laughs> if I was going to go to their church yeah, yeah, yeah. in rural Missouri and I walked in wearing a baseball hat. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I know a story at that church. My uncle was a handyman and mm -hmm. the church had an issue. He went to fix the, the issue and it wasn't a Sunday. He showed up there like on a Tuesday and he was wearing a sleeveless shirt because he's a handyman. He goes around. Mm -hmm. He walks into this church with a sleeveless shirt to fix their air conditioning or something. And the pastor was like, you can't be in here with a sleeveless shirt on. Go get a, get some sleeves on. You're in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I'm just in my work uniform. I'm here to fix your air conditioner. That wouldn't happen here. If a guy right. showed up to fix something in our, you know, and wore yeah. a sleeve of shirt, we'd be like, there's people wear sleeve of shirts to sun on Sunday. Yeah, there's a, a large degree of self-expression. Like you're saying, like there is freedom here. Culturally at his hands, right. there's a lot of freedom here uh, up to a point. Like, up to a point. If yeah. I'm at the pool swimming with my shirt off, Madison yeah. has Madison's not in sin. Right. If I show up to to church, church Sunday morning with shirtless, shirtless it's kind of like, suit. hey, hey, but I'm going to the pool afterwards. Yeah. You're like, yeah, still, here's, <laughs> I'm just baptizing someone after. Right, yeah, like, here's a here's a t-shirt. Yeah, Madison, yeah, yeah you'd on. give me a t-shirt. So it becomes about love, and it becomes about these sort of personal filters of, okay, am I the principle we see in Corin in Corinthians is guys respect one another, mm -hmm. don't cause distractions mm -hmm. and division in the church by trying to buck right. the 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 normal culture just to express your freedom. Um, that's going to in large part depend on your context and your culture mm -hmm. at your church, at where you're at, what, what country you're in, what mm -hmm. city you're in, what denomination. And, and what the Lord has called you to do. I yeah. think that's the the big thing, especially being people who are on stage. Like if something gets in the way of that, you don't, that's why it was such a quote unquote crisis was you wanted to make sure that nothing got in the way of that. And so if you're called overseas, there might just be something that you're not able to do if you're mm -hmm. ministering overseas, wearing a beard or not wearing a beard. You know, it's like vice versa. Whole, Those are another example would be Andy on our team. Mm -hmm. Andy's got sleeve tattoos, mm -hmm. right? From a, his his past. And mm -hmm. there nothing on them is like shocking. I haven't really looked closely. Some of them are really cool. Yeah, they're just he's yeah. got sleeve tattoos. Well, when he first started working here, he started wearing only long sleeves to cover mm -hmm. up the sleeve tattoos. And he told me, mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I just don't know if, if people see my tattoos. If and I told him, dude. Wear t-shirts. Right. I didn't say you have to display those. I yeah. want your sleeve tattoos. You have freedom to... Yeah, to, that's not our culture. Mm -hmm. And so it's this interest. And that's what's so cool about this. I think that's why this is even a worthwhile topic. Maybe right. it's not. Maybe it's been a huge waste of time. No, I think but, it's it's worth, definitely worth it. But it's because we do have freedom. Mm -hmm. Jesus has freed us. And it's not about living under this list of rules, but it is about living in some ways the freedom brings with it this responsibility that you don't even have in a culture that's just about the rules. Mm -hmm. If it's just rules, it's like, well, I just check, check, check. I'm fine. You don't have to check your heart, right? You just put the right clothes on and you're, you're good. You mm -hmm. could actually have a really uh, terrible attitude, just horrible disposition, but still check dress the, the boxes, right way, check the yeah. boxes. But in our culture, it's like, hey, I'm free to wear a hat. Mm -hmm. But with the Corinthian filter, I'm free to wear a hat. Is that going to cause disruption, division? Is that going to be a distraction to anyone? Is that going to create drama that in any way takes away right. from people's focus on Jesus? Well, if that's the answer, the answer is yes, then like, then no, take the hat off. But there are are things that are worth causing drama and distraction when it's worth taking a stand for. You're just Correct. saying something as small as a hat is, is not. probably not self-expression. <laughs> yeah, and our culture very much values self-expression. Right. Self-expression. Yeah. Doesn't rise to that level. All right. So let me throw a few edge cases out there. Okay. Edge cases. Here we go. Can I so wear... So I think... Are we saying this? I think we're a hat church. I Do wouldn't you? call us a hat church though. No, but I was saying I'm like saying it's okay. There's freedom. Are you saying yeah. that? I would say that. I would... But I wouldn't call us a hat church. No, like my point is... You don't like... That makes yeah, it yeah. seem like you have to wear... No, like, no, but my... But, you have to prescribe to a certain degree. Like if someone shows up in a suit and tie to Sunday morning, that's just as appropriate as... Yeah, we have some people that do dress really nice. Right, and that's okay. Like Willie and his wife. Yeah, they're awesome. They're like dressed the to the nice, nines, yeah. Yeah, Kimberly on our welcome team is always yep. like the most sharply dressed person. She's always yep. got like a suit jacket on. Um, when I say we're a hat church, is it permissible at his hands? That's yeah. I would say yes, but it's up to you. You're the you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Well, that's the point. I've, it's apparently been like this for years because I've never even noticed or cared. Yeah, and there's this whole like weird thing where 
we were talking about this, like if I'm praying in a circle, I'll take off my hat to pray. But if I'm praying on stage, I don't take off my hat to pray. <laughs> Weird. But what I'm trying to communicate is the freedom dynamic of yeah. like, I think if I'm on stage and I'm taking off my hat every time to pray, while I do that as a sign of respect in a circle, I don't want to signal like this is required by no, everybody. Everyone else takes their hat off. It's because... just a personal, and that's, I, I'm a paradoxical person, I guess. I, I know, know. I kind of <laughs> joked with you. I think you saw it the other day we were eating lunch. Yeah. And I took my hat off when it was, and like looked over at you right before and you were like, <laughs> you're like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know, I'm just being silly. So edge cases. Edge cases. Here we go. I mean, these might not be edge cases. These have been, you know, probably discussed and discussed too much. Can I wear leggings to church? Me, Madison. <laughs> 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 do you ever wear leggings no, normally? No, I don't, no. Why is this an edge case? Uh, no, it's not an edge case. I'm just saying like the this- Can a lady wear leggings? Is that what you're saying? This has implications on the dress code question. So as a hey, dress code, we don't have a dress code as a sure. church. And occasionally there are people that have asked us to. Sure. And there have been a few examples of people who have worn, like when I was a youth pastor, I had a kid one time wear a really, really offensive shirt. Sure. And it was like, I said, hey man, can you- I actually gave him one of our shirts. Can you mm -hmm. wear this instead? Go to the bathroom and change? Because this is just not, mm -hmm. that's causing a distraction. Um, there, we actually had a guy on the welcome team. I'm okay sharing this. And he had a shirt on that said straight white Christian or something like mm -hmm. that. And I said, hey man, would you mind? Now look, we can go on a whole different conversation here. Um, he was a straight white Christian. So am I. Right. <laughs> and, but there was like an, there was like a thing. It's an offensive. To that church yeah. that was like, well, what it's if, a confrontational shirt. Yes. And it was one of those points where the what was happening politically at the time mm -hmm. was this very much tribalism and mm -hmm. people are being lumped. And he it's like, I'm like, hey man, you gotta take it off. Mm -hmm. Here's a his hand shirt. Because that's not right. That's not what we're that's not we're not saying on the welcome to, hey, everybody. Mm -hmm. I wasn't saying your shirt's bad, wrong, fine, whatever. Yeah, we probably wouldn't have asked someone who just walked in with that shirt versus someone on the, if that's like the first but it was a shirt that was about like yeah. this edge statement and that's like that's not the purpose of but it was a volunteer too a volunteer. so there's a there's a leadership dynamic right. so we don't have a dress code and for us dress code and it's funny how we're talking about hats it's like for 99 percent of the cases that i've had people talk to that's just not going to rise to the level of us addressing addressing it, it because that's not that's not like where we're going to start drawing lines of who's in, who's out, who, you yeah. know, like I'm, I mean, who's in, who's out is probably the wrong language, but like now if it was something that was super inappropriate, I mean like crazy exposure. Yeah. That's a different thing. We have actually haven't had that to my knowledge. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My point is <laughs> I haven't seen someone dressed in such a way where I go, have you? Just like people coming in. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. maybe I'm on stage a lot. And so I yeah. see a big, broad you know no i spectrum. think i think it is but it's it is one of those things with but like I, my the, point is the I church would, is for people so it's, it's people for are going to show up when people are going to show up in different stages there is a certain line that i think i would feel comfortable as a pastor saying to someone hey i'm so sorry this is an awkward conversation put some pants on put some pants on <laughs> uh here's maybe we should have pants i don't know but i haven't had that happen but i guess it's a discernment issue. I think that's what we're talking about and too. I, it's a I discernment issue. I guess that's issue. the thing for me. There is a big difference with the stage and volunteers. So like if I was wearing a weed, a pot leaf shirt on stage, it yeah, would probably take, take be like, Well, you no, mentioned bands. Don't. We actually yeah. had uh, an awesome lady on our worship team who wore, I think it was an ACDC shirt once. Mm -hmm. And we asked her to replace it with a His Hand shirt. Yeah. And if you're an ACDC fan, I'm not saying stop listening to ACDC or whatever. Yeah. Like you mentioned the Beatles. There's some ACDC songs that are, I think Highway to Hell is one of their most famous songs. Right. But they are very much evocative of a certain... If you're wearing an ACDC shirt, it doesn't necessarily mean I adore ACDC. Correct. It's kind of like rock and roll. It's such a general vibe. A general vibe, yeah. right. You know. And so... But she totally understood. Yeah. And we're like, hey, this this could rise to the level of a distraction mm -hmm. that is not worth mm -hmm. any distraction. The focus is on Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. What other edge cases? Uh, those, so, I, mean, I guess discernment is the issue yeah, there. I and can you wear is. leggings to church? Maybe. Right. It depends on what, what, what you over mean those by, leggings. And what you mean by leggings. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, there's definitely like there's a, a certain style of like girls wearing leggings with a really long shirt over it that sure. covers, or you could wear like the Lululemon the, butt, I'm going, butt the, lift leggings. Yeah. I have a few pairs of those and they're just. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, that's a conversation where if someone walked in like that, mm -hmm. I would be totally comfortable saying, hey, I'm assuming in this situation it's a woman because that's mm -hmm. maybe not. But if it was, I'd be like, hey, ma'am, I'm so sorry. This is really awkward. But we really? ask you, yeah. I mean, if it was a super, it's just like normal bodacious, like I don't know, butt lift leggings. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm seeing like a whole. I go to the the gym that I go to. There's yeah. a certain 
I'm just where saying, it's like you're pretty much in a bathing suit. I feel right like if now. someone walked in, we probably wouldn't say, say really much so? to them. No. I think I that's think if where they were say, a volunteer, that's something where you just say, "Hey, we're glad this person's here." Yeah, that's I, and, I think in general, like maybe like yeah. in principle, we would say like we I would guess, we would prefer. Does that it ever not, get to a level before nudity where you would be like, "Hey, put something on"? Um, Surely, I, it's a discernment issue, right? That's the point. The Holy I, Spirit. I agree. I just feel like when it comes to people walking in the building, I yeah. feel like we just have like a different filter of like. I don't. That's my point. Is I don't, want them to hear the. We're the not truth. having an argument now. I don't remember a conversation that I've ever had with someone where I've told them that. I've seen I'm imagining people that a, have dressed. I'll put it like this. It's like this is where it's like I don't want to call people out. Yeah, you know what I mean. I've seen people dressed like Meredith dresses on the day where they go to the beach in the office. Okay, I'm trying to remember that episode. <laughs> this is probably making it worse. Yeah, I think this is... <laughs> where it's either too low or too short, like is like oh, okay. the option. Gotcha. We've seen like that, but we I don't think we would have ever asked someone like that to change or... Yeah, or, I mean, that's my point. Like, it would have to be so... Yeah. Bad. Have to rise to an extreme level. Yeah, because what I would tell the other person who's like, I'm offended at what that person's wearing, mm -hmm. I'd tell them like, well... Pray for him or Pray whatever. For them. Yeah. <laughs> Go sit somewhere else. Like I would yeah. like that. That's 99% yeah. of the time. I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, I guess I can imagine a scenario where right. if I felt like it was a major distraction and it was like, I would be fine having an awkward conversation. But things conversation. like hats and things yeah, like hats wouldn't do that. Uh, jewelry. I usually don't rise to thing like to that level, even though there are commands in scripture about jewelry. So it's Susan, like, who used to lead our worship team back in the day when she helped start his hands. Um, she never wore jewelry on stage. Mm -hmm. And she also didn't wear shoes on stage. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I know, she was always no, shoeless. That, but she yeah. never wore jewelry because she never wanted jewelry to be a distraction. Right. And I think that just exposes the heart of the matter. But mm -hmm. people never noticed that she didn't wear jewelry. But some people got offended that she didn't wear shoes. <laughs> she didn't wear shoes because she had this personal thing of like, it's like Moses. It's like like holy take your, thing, take yeah. your shoes off your own holy ground. She just wanted to, it was like an act of worship for her. Sure. But for some people, it's like, why is that lady not wearing shoes? <laughs> it's kind of gross. It's yeah. gross. Yeah, you right. know what I mean? And it's just one of those things where you go, okay. Susan doesn't have to wear shoes. Yeah. I think this whole episode has and been... And I think what we found out is if Susan didn't have to wear shoes... <laughs> I have to wear a hat. <laughs> I can wear a hat. <laughs> Which I think gets to the point. I, I do think that this episode was helpful. It was slightly off the rails, but... Super I think, off the rails. I think it was helpful Not because... Not what we planned. Because it, it is worth talking about and gets to that how do you interpret scripture thing. So, yeah, this so is it's good. Cultural. Uh, it, it's a matter of discernment. And some scriptures for all people for all time. And I yeah. think scripture is pretty clear on what those things are. We might have to have a different conversation sure. about that, a different podcast. Maybe this will lead to a part two. And generally there's a presumption of faithfulness and willing willingness to love the Lord. So Correct. like, it's like, given that, what's the best? Don't break, there's moral laws right. of like harm to other people. What God has declared is human behavior good. And then there's like cultural specific mm -hmm issues and right. sometimes those merge together and that's where we have to have discernment yeah but uh, i think what we've said is that can you wear a hat probably yeah <laughs> you're good <laughs> probably oh at his hands you're good to wear a hat okay am can i good Justin to wear a, wear a hat probably probably <laughs> we'll figure it out all right well very good this has been an interesting episode and i love these conversations with you man thanks, thanks guys all right let's pray <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a thing about podcasts that end in prayer. I don't know. Yeah, if I don't weird. know if I know any podcasts that end in prayer. Mike Winger's podcast ends Does in it, prayer. I don't I think I've ever made it to the end of one of my oh, podcasts. Gotcha. It's a long episodes, man. I understand why you pray. I don't know. For some reason, it feels like virtual prayer and it just feels different. You're driving your car. I got I got to I'll, I'll say when I listen to the His Hands podcast, the like Sunday yeah. morning, I always skip Lord's Supper at the end. I can see I'm that. Because I'm driving in my car. You're driving your car. You're like, oh, now it's done. Yeah, now yeah. it's done. Because the point of the podcast is probably listening to the message. Yeah, right. I can see that. So, All right. Yeah. 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 Because it's almost always kind of how the message ends. That's so interesting. Yeah. Must have started at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes sense too, because a lot of times, yeah, but a lot of times now the Lord's Supper blends with the message so much where it used like, to be sort of like, like a and now we're doing to the sacrifice the, that Jesus made for us. I think you should, because it's very like they, and I'll kind of say, and that's kind of what this is about. Right. And that'd be a weird point to end the podcast. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs>